Here I'm going to discuss the anatomy, embryonic origin, as well as the tissues and muscles that are being innervated by the superior and recurrent laryngeal nerves. So both of these nerves are arising from the vagus nerve. So the left vagus nerve gives rise to the superior laryngeal nerve as well as the left recurrent laryngeal nerve, which loops under the aortic arch, while the right vagus nerve also gives rise to the superior laryngeal nerve as well as the right recurrent laryngeal nerve, which loops under the brachiocephalic artery. So this is one important difference that you should be aware of, and is that the left recurrent laryngeal nerve is longer than the right recurrent laryngeal nerve, and so therefore a left nerve would be able to loop under the aortic arch, while the right recurrent laryngeal nerve loops under the brachiocephalic artery. And so here you can note that we have the ascending aorta, and then on the other side we have the descending aorta, and so the re left recurrent laryngeal nerves run in between the two. So on the CT scan, here you can see that we have the ascending aorta and then we have the descending aorta on the other side and so by the arrow here I have shown you that we have the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now as for the embryonic origin, the vagus nerve arises from the fourth as well as the sixth brachial arches and so the fourth brachial arch gives rise to the superior laryngeal nerve while the sixth brachial arch gives rise to the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Next we have the innervation. So the recurrent laryngeal nerve innervates all the intrinsic muscles of the larynx with the exception of the cricothyroid muscle which is innervated by the superior laryngeal nerve. So once again, recurrent laryngeal nerve innervates all the intrinsic muscles of the larynx with the exception of the cricothyroid muscle which is innervated by the superior laryngeal nerve. And then superior laryngeal nerve also innervates the laryngeal mucosa above the vocal folds while the recurrent laryngeal nerve innervates the laryngeal mucosa below the vocal folds. Now one other point that I would like to mention is that conditions that will cause damage to the recurrent laryngeal nerve can cause voice hoarseness. So voice hoarseness is a complication that can arise from damage to the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And so conditions that can cause damage include, for instance, tumors that arise in the neck or in the thorax that can impinge on the recurrent laryngeal nerve. It could include surgeries like for instance thyroidectomy or removal of the parathyroid glands can cause damage to the uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve and again cause voice hoarseness and although rare it has also been shown that rheumatic fever can also lead to the voice hoarseness and can you think why rheumatic fever can cause hoarseness due to the damage to the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the reason for that is that rheumatic fever will cause mitral stenosis which will lead to the dilation of the left atrium and then the left atrium is the most posterior structure of the heart which will keep on impinging on the left recurrent laryngeal nerve as a consequence of which it can cause voice hoarseness. This is a rare complication that you may not really be able to observe in a real world but for the examination purposes it's important for you to know that mitral stenosis due to the dilation of the left atrium which is the most posterior structure of the heart can cause voice hoarseness due to the damage to the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. And that concludes our discussion of this topic.